Welcome back. On our channel, we've covered a lot of off-grid power systems, a lot of our own and a few others. But today I have the opportunity to take a look at the getaway couples power system. My friend Jason is here. Jason and Ray have a YouTube channel and a blog called The Getaway Couple, as per your shirt. Mm -hmm. And they've built a pretty cool power system that I just wanted to take some time and chat a little bit about, share with our audience. I guess the first question is, uh, how big is this rig? It's pretty enormous. And what yeah. is it? <laughs> so this is a 42 foot Grand Design Solitude 375. And uh, coming from Los Angeles, we didn't think we could really downsize. So we ended up getting pretty much the biggest RV they had on the lot. <laughs> Now, I think we could definitely do a lot smaller, but at the time, we couldn't even fathom like moving full time into something smaller. Yeah, well, uh, so. We were in the same boat when we started on the road. Yeah. Uh, but you have this giant rig and you've built a pretty significant solar electric system on it as well. What did you build into this rig? Yeah, so when we set out to start boondocking and uh, power was a whole part of that, the whole goal was to be able to power everything. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that has that requirement. Uh, I wanted to go boondocking a lot and get out there while my wife was a little bit more hesitant. So uh, to get out there, we had the requirement of powering everything. And so I went with a two inverter system. We have two 3000 watt inverters. Uh, one powering each leg of our RV. So that way we can use a microwave and an AC. Uh, and then I have two solar charge controllers uh, that is taking the power from 10 solar panels on the roof, 10 200 watt solar panels, so 2000 watts of solar. What do you have for batteries as well? Uh, for <coughs> batteries, we went with six uh, 100 amp hour battle worn batteries. Okay. So this is all a lot of equipment, especially with uh, 10 solar panels on the roof. Did you have any concerns with weight in a rig like this? Absolutely. I feel like before, uh, so we had 1200 watts of solar. We had six panels on the roof and I wanted to get just a little bit more last year. So we actually purged pretty much anything and everything we hadn't used in the RV in a year to make sure that we had uh, the extra weight capacity to put on the rig. And so uh, just full-time living, you get used to that, that little balancing act of things that you want and things your RV can handle. That's always a question and concern is kind of how much can I put on the rig yeah. with, uh, with the weight limitations. And you've done some suspension upgrades as well. So we upgraded our suspension to 8,000 pound Moride independent <coughs> suspension axles. Uh, so that gives you suspension at each of the tires. And then we also upgraded from G-rated uh, tires to H-rated tires. Wow. So <laughs> so at least uh, we know that the footprint is strong. You know, it's that's hopefully not going to be where we have our issues. Yeah. I think that what's um, interesting about what you built here is the, the dual inverter setup. And uh, you mentioned that you get the benefit of being able to run one appliance on one inverter and a different one on a separate inverter, right? Correct. But the Victrons have the capability to do what's called split phase, which means that you can actually produce a, a 240 volt circuit as if you're plugged into like a 50 amp power. Do you do that with the system? We don't buy uh, just the RV manufacturers tend <coughs> to stray away from that. But if we did want to go to like, say, a more residential, maybe an electric range or something like that, we could install that and the Victrons would allow us to. Or maybe if we've been looking at uh, installing a different air conditioning system, more residential style, which would allow us to do the, a split phase system. Like a 240 volt uh, mini split air conditioner exactly, or something. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and 240 volt appliances, yeah, like a washer and dryer, yeah. possibly a range yeah. or that. Those are really the only applications that I could see you using that in an RV though. Yep, uh, it, but that's not the main reason we really went with it. Uh, the reason we went with two was at the time, you know, we didn't really understand, like I'm not an electrical engineer, so we didn't really understand requirements or anything, but we had the 
I knew I wanted to power everything and having two, it made more sense for me to be able to wire each leg of the electrical system to the entire RV so it works just like we're plugged in when we're off grid. Uh, in other modified systems, you could have bigger inverters, but you still usually create a secondary block and uh, you uh, circuit breaker and you power that circuit breaker with everything you want, but you still have circuits that aren't powered from your inverter uh, in normal systems. And we didn't want that. Even when we were having it installed, they were like, do you want us to wire like your water heater in? You probably will never use your water heater on uh, when boondocking because you'll use the propane and not the electric side. <clears throat> but we wanted to have the ability to do that. And yeah. so that's, that's why we went with this system and we love this system. Um, so it doesn't just pass through one leg or we don't have to power a secondary circuit breaker box that, that is only powered when we're boondocking. So the, the, the dual inverters uh, in this coach, all the power is passing through the inverters if you're plugged into shore, right? Yep. And then you're going to one leg in your, your basically your circuit breaker panel from each inverter, right? Correct. So in a sense, instead of jumpering the two and powering it from one, yep you're powering half your panel on one inverter and half on the other. Right, and since, since we installed the system, they've come out with some cooler technology, like uh, <coughs> AM Solar has like the smart face selector mm -hmm. that kind of helps all of that. But at the time, there was, there was none of that. You kind of had to do it all yourself. And I, Which is what we did. <laughs> exactly, and I, I don't have the skills that you did. We would have burned our RV to the ground. <laughs> Are there any challenges or downsides to the dual inverter setup that you, you've got here? Absolutely, and it's things that you don't really think about. So the main thing that we have a problem with is uh, if we're plugged into a 30 amp circuit, which is not split phase, mm -hmm. uh, the system still works great, but only one of the inverters will uh, pass through power and charge the batteries and the other inverter will actually draw from the battery. And so you kind of run into some of these run conditions where uh, say I'm trying to use an AC and it's on that second inverter, it's pulling all the power straight from the batteries and then the main inverter is trying to recharge the batteries. So you get into this like kind of weird looping thing where you're trying to put a ton of power into the batteries and pull a ton out. And I just don't like that. But you can solve that by going into Victron software and changing the system over to a parallel setup uh, where they act together, and that's fine. So when they're acting together, does that mean they're in uh, uh, not split phase, basically a single phase? Yes, they are a single phase parallel setup. And so that works great on 30 amp, but not when I plug into a 50 amp. So it's not that difficult. You used to have to get a a uh, little dongle and you'd plug your computer in to change your different setups and you can save them and it makes it pretty easy to switch. Uh, since then Victron has even come out with the ability to switch it remotely from the app on your phone and you can switch between the two profiles. Mm -hmm. But that's still <coughs> just another thing to think about and do. And so even when I, we're out boondocking I'll usually uh, switch it to parallel so that when we're charging off our generator it's using both of the chargers to charge instead of one so there's just little little nuances like that i assume that's a benefit as well with two inverters is that you have twice the charging capability yeah so it, it, it is definitely a benefit and all of this stuff comes with like you just have to make sure you know you're using it so if i leave it in split phase which i did for the first you know year that we had it uh only one charger worked uh when you plug into a generator because that's just giving you a single phase power source. Mm -hmm. So so then the second one would be inverting. And so it's always just like weird little nuances. And the inverters are tied together. They talk to each other to sync their phases or create this split phase, right? Yeah, uh, and that does remind me there is a, another issue uh, with them. So they, they do talk together and they do look for split phase, but then uh, they have a setting for true split phase or a uh, floating split phase. And so when I first got the system, I had a problem with uh, plugging into some campgrounds, they weren't a true split phase because the way they have three <coughs> legs of power and the way that they distribute them, so they're slightly out of phase. So then I had to figure out the configuration to put it in a floating split phase. So 
they would line up. Yeah, it's always just little little things. So I learned a lot about electricity. And so if you are interested in learning a lot about electricity because your system <laughs> is just not working 100% exactly how you would expect it to do, I would recommend going with the dual uh, inverter system. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, and, and we personally thought about going with it. But for some of the reasons that you mentioned that we kind of yep. knew about ahead of time, we, we chose to, uh, to, to take a different route. But I think it is really interesting. Uh, you talked about being able to control it remotely with your phone. Uh, what kind of uh, remote monitoring and control do you have on this? So uh, we have the CCGX Victron Control uh, Color Control Center in the RV, and so that's how we can easily quickly see it uh, just while we're in the RV to see the power coming in. You know, it's really fancy looking. Uh, and then we can look at it remotely using the VRM online application, and it, Victron's done a really good job of being able to get your data out into the cloud so you can look at the data anywhere which we just used the other day when we ran out of, uh, when your electricity in your RV was turning on and off. That's right. And I didn't want to walk <laughs> across a cold parking lot to mine. And we looked it up What's and we got- What's the system doing? Yeah, and we saw that uh, our, my RV was not connected to the grid <laughs> and our heater was just sucking all the battery power out. So they've done a really good job. Uh, the other thing I like about Victron is that they actually have an open source system so they allow you to not only see your data through their cloud options, I'm able to take that data out and put it into my own Home Assistant Smart RV setup, which allows us to do kind of cool stuff where if our, uh, not, if, if our power coming into the system gets cut off, then you can do things like uh, turn the fridge power off because another downside of our system of everything always being powered is my fridge doesn't automatically switch to propane now yeah. uh, when we unplug. So uh, I'm able to control certain devices and do things like that because the Victron system is open source and allows me to pull all my data out. Yeah, we do something similar. That's, that is definitely a, a pro and a con to powering the entire RV off the batteries, I suppose. Yeah. But that's pretty neat that you can, uh, can kind of do those, uh, I guess, if then statements to control the system based upon say power flow or yeah. solar needs. Or exactly, like it's just a, a data input at that point. And you can track that, you can track your, your data over long periods of time. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we do some control based upon solar load. So you, like you talked about having the uh, water heater connected to the system. Do you, have you ever turned on an appliance to draw some power down when you have extra solar? So I have all of my plans to do that. So uh, that's what I'm working on actually right now is because I can control my fridge uh, while we're boondocking, uh, I want to set up the code to turn it to electrical to pull down that, that solar panel when we're you know, <coughs> above 90%. So that's, that's in my, my next uh, phase of my Smart RV project. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about the solar panels. I love what you've done on the roof of this rig. First of all, what are the solar panels that you have? What type? Yeah, so we have high-tech solar um, panels. They're 200 watt, and we have both uh, clear panels. We have six clear panels and six just standard with like and a the white. And clear meaning you can see light through through them. And they, you know, the marketing is they're bifacial, <laughs> so you should be able to get uh, maybe up to 25 percent uh, power for each cell through the back off like reflections. They're probably a little too close to the roof uh, to actually see any use, but they do look nice. So. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. And what I really like what you've done with it is you've done a really nice job with the conduit system on the roof to keep all the wiring really clean. Yeah, so this was a 2.0. Uh, for me, the first time we kind of did the solar, we were in Milwaukee, Ray and I did it ourselves, and we were kind of leery about what we were doing. We didn't really understand it uh, fully. Uh, we watched a lot of videos, and uh, it looked pretty good, but the, the wires were always something that troubled me. We had uh, some of the like cable protector up there, and it kind of crinkled and like broke off, and then we had zip ties to try to keep the wires down, and we, did, we wanted to put the minimal amount of screws in there, and all that stuff that's always just bothered me. So we actually had a... Uh, roof replaced like the the roof started coming off actually up at your guys's property last yes. year <laughs> and so they uh they 
Grand Design put a brand new roof on here for us, and when they did that, we had the opportunity to move the panels, and so that's what got us the room to add four more. And when uh, I was sitting there planning out having to redo all this solar, which is always fun, but also like I'm very glad when it's when it's over, I uh, was looking at like what houses do. And so, you know, they always run it through conduit. Usually and under the panels. Under so the panels, yeah, keep it out of the sun. And so <laughs> I kind of did that. And I like to punch as little holes in my roof as possible. So I didn't want to like screw things down and the, the sticky side of the, the zip tie holders didn't really work last time. So I came up with this option where we have the really nice clean conduit lines and I went with uh, rigid conduit and then flexi conduit and I agree, I think it looks very, very nice. Yeah, definitely. And what, um, how is your system wired on the roof? Are you in, in parallel, are you in series? And I guess, what is, what is the voltage of your system? Are you a 12 volt system here? Yeah, so this is a full 12 volt system. Uh, we definitely weren't ready to go to 24 or do any of the other fancy conversions when we were installing it. It was kind of like as, as base as we could. Let's keep everything uh, the same. And so we do have two, um, two runs uh, in parallel up on the roof. So I have uh, six panels and six panels uh, come to a combiner box. They run through the conduit to a larger um, box where they combined into uh, six gauge wires. And so I have two sets of six gauge wires that go through the roof and then come down here to our charge controllers. So performance wise, how have you found this system? Do you have enough solar? Do you have enough batteries? I mean, this is a substantial system. Yeah, uh, I think you can never have enough solar and batteries, <laughs> but uh, I, the system definitely works for us. Uh, our original system with just the, the six 100 uh, amp hour batteries and the six panels on the roof didn't really cover us. I think we would be able to be good for three days maybe if you had like intermittent uh, cloudy days and we wouldn't be able to fully recharge every single day. We get to like, you know, 90% and then 80% and then it would, it would be trending downward. Yeah. Uh, with 2000 watts on the roof, even in the dead of winter, uh, tilting the panels, we were able to fully recharge every day. So I think our system will work great for us now, especially as we go into the summer. We haven't been able to test it yet in the summer. Got it. Uh, but based on our winter performance so far, yeah, it's it's amazing. We're fully charged and have excess solar for the first time. Now, a lot of people look at 2000 watts and say, that is an enormous amount of power. What on earth do you use all that power for? <laughs> in your yeah. So the more power you have, the more power you tend to use. We've noticed this too. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we power, I have uh, NAS, I have uh, that we leave on almost all the time if we can. Uh, I have a smart RV system and I went a little overboard and have like an Intel NUC that takes like 800 watts of power like all continuously. And because it's the smart RV system, I leave it on all the time. We have our two computers that we're working on every day. Uh, we like to just leave our lights on because our RV is very uh, brown and kind of like darker. darker. And so it looks very depressing with all the lights off. Uh, so we like to have the lights on all the time. Uh, and just, we just up. like, we like to just use everything. We have coffee, you know, we microwave food. It's just everything. The question a lot of people ask is, can you run an air conditioner off the system? <laughs> Absolutely. We can actually run both of our ACs off the system. Because of the dual inverters. Because of the dual inverters. <laughs> and uh, we'll have to see now with the new solar if we're able to keep up uh, a little bit more. You know, we can only run it for a couple hours. Yeah. But usually when you're boondocking, you don't go to places where you need to run it the entire time. Yeah. And so that definitely keeps up, especially if you're able to like stop somewhere, turn on your AC and then hit the road, yeah. like uh, like maybe an hour or two before you get to your destination. I know you guys did that the other day. We did, we yeah. ran the air conditioner for like an hour, hour before we got to the RV park. It was nice and cool when we got exactly. here. Exactly. So, so you can do the same thing. Absolutely. Very cool. So you talked a little bit about um, this is 2.0. Is there a potential for like a, a 3.0? We've talked a little bit about some things that you could do to sort of improve some of the issues that you've had with the dual, dual inverters. Yeah, and so I actually already have I would say a, a 2.5 planned and uh, for dealing with 
the the main issue, which is plugging the generator and trying to get both of them to charge. It, I've already purchased a Victron Autoformer, so I can uh, put that in my front bay here where I have my generator tray and just put a 30 amp plug in uh, that's wired directly to the Autoformer. And it'll take that single phase input and make it a true split phase. And so I can leave my system in split phase and if it works at 50 amp, I can plug it in. Uh, like normal, and if I have a 30 amp circuit or if I'm using my generator, I can plug it into the, the outlet in the front and the system will just automatically use whichever plug it's getting power from. And so that's, that's the next step, so I don't have to worry about going into the app anymore and switching things. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm very excited about that. I'll get to it one of these days. And an autoformer is, is kind of a complicated solution, but it's, it's sort of a, it's a neat thing because yeah. what you can do with it is take just a, a single phase and create a split phase or vice versa. Yeah. And it can also balance loads between the two legs, right? Absolutely. In a perfect world, I would have the, the one I have before and then also put one after. On the backside. So that way it's like I have one 6,000 watt inverter and it doesn't matter, doesn't matter which leg is pulling the power, the mm -hmm. autoformer would balance it across both of them. So say you have you know, 4,000 watts on one leg for some reason, uh, it would just balance 2,000 from each of the inverters and not overload one inverter. Yeah, so. and give you more capacity, if you will, uh, from not, not having enough on one leg maybe. Yeah. I've uh, helped people with the autoformers when they needed 240 volts, but they only had a 120 volt inverter and created a split phase out of it. Of course, you have to consider your currents in and out because <laughs> right. yeah, the power, you don't make power <laughs> with an autoformer, you just convert nope. it. But, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then other than that, the only other thing would be, I know there's a staircase right here behind this wall, so there's a little bit more dead space. And so figuring a way to kind of move these back into that little bit of dead space mm. like underneath the stairs versus having them stick out. Uh, just a little more storage space. Yeah, more just kind of, uh, I like to have it nice and open in here, so. yeah. yeah. Well, it's a pretty awesome system. Thank you so much for walking us through it. I, I've always thought the, the, the split phase is a neat concept, so yeah. appreciate you showing that to us. As always, thank you so much for joining us here on Morton's On The Move. You can also learn more over on their website at getawaycouple.com. Both of us produce daily content over on our websites. Lots more information to learn. Sign up for our newsletter, and we will plan to see you down the road.